Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now I'm planning my new craft room as you guys know and we are just about to get started on it and I'm going to be showing the whole process. But as my first video in this kind of series, I wanted to talk to you guys about five different tips I have for planning out your craft room to make it a perfect space for you. It's such a different thing for everybody and I'm gonna walk you through some different things you really have to think through before creating your craft room. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so my first tip that I have is to account for all the space that you have and account for all the supplies you have as well and really how much you have of each category of supplies. So for me, like cardstock, I don't use a ton, so I just had to have a little bit of storage for it. But this is nice because when I pull a piece out, it'll be completely flat. With the magazine holders, I found that it warped the cardstock a lot since it was standing straight up. Another thing that I really like about this is it's super easy to keep your scraps and keep it in the exact same spot instead of putting it in a scrap drawer. But if you have a ton of cardstock that you have to go through and store, you might want a lot more storage for that. You also have to think about how much you're going to use something because that's going to really come into play on where you store it. With me, you know that I love my ink pads. I have them in my first drawer here in an ink pad organizer. And so on those things, you might want to spend a little bit more money on storage for so you can use them more often and then store some other things in drawers or kind of in piles that you don't need to get to super often and you don't quite need to spend a lot of money because you're not going to be using them. Now my second tip kind of goes into that it kind of segues really nicely here is to buy or create some really good storage for your supplies. When you're doing your craft room you want to make sure that it stays clean and that everything works for you really nicely and you have a system in place and for that you want to make sure that everything has a bin or a home dedicated to it that you know you can put it right back to that spot when you're putting stuff away. That way it makes it less daunting when you're trying to clean up. So for me, when I first started, I did not invest in anything at all for my storage. I actually would take cardboard boxes from my orders and things like that and I would cut them, you know, take the box and then cut little dividers to make ink pad organizers and you can really do that with lots of different things. It doesn't need to be expensive at all. I will have down below linked a few different storage units that I really, really love including this tonic one where it has dividers in it. That's one of my faves to invest in and spending the little bit of extra money on that was well worth it for me as well as like a storage for an ink pad organizer like I had mentioned because I use those so so often. My third tip that I have is to find the storage system that works for you whether it is cubes and bins that you can pull out and take to your desk or if it's drawer units. For me, I found that having everything to be a drawer unit has been so, so helpful for me. Sometimes shelves and cube units can be a little bit cumbersome because you have to really dig through the supplies since they're such big storage units. And you also have to make sure that you put everything back once you're done. Whereas with drawers, you can pull the drawer out, take what you need and put it right back into it. I find that that's a little bit easier for me and there won't be bins all over my craft room. Another thing that I really like is the drawer units from Ikea called Alex drawer units. And the reason why I love those so, so much is because they're a thinner drawer unit. And when you really think about craft supplies, a lot of them are small little bottles or ink pads or things like that that are a lot smaller. And so putting them in a big 12 by 12 cube doesn't quite make sense. Whereas having them in drawer units like that allows you to have one layer of supplies in the drawer and not have to dig through your supplies to find them. Because a lot of the craft supplies are very small, so those drawer units are some of my favorites to store my stuff in. My fourth tip is huge for lighting in your craft room. Whether you're in a corner of a room and you want to add lamps with these light bulbs in, or you have a whole dedicated space to your craft room where you can change out the light bulbs above, I recommend switching out your light bulbs to daylight bulbs and some of the brightest ones you can get. That way you have really, really bright lighting, and even if you're crafting at night, you can have true tone colors. I was actually comparing some different colors that I was using for a card the other day, and I looked at them just underneath like a more orangey bulb that's naturally in your house, and then I brought it down to my craft room with these really nice white bulbs that are down here, and you can tell such a big difference in the color and really see them true because this is almost like having natural daylight in your craft room. So that's one of my biggest tips I can give, again, whether you have little lamps or or above lights above you, it's really going to be super helpful to get great lighting in your craft room so you can see everything and every color you're putting down. Number five, and this one is a huge one, is to make sure you're getting rid of supplies that you're not using. Usually my rule is I go th through my craft room like after every year and I just see what I've kind of accumulated that year and go through it 
and see what I'm not really using. If I'm not using it, I'll put it into a bin and I will try to get it used and then I'll go through it like a couple months later and if I still haven't used it and it's still not bringing me joy because I'm not able to use it, I like to just give those away to a friend, another crafter who I know is going to use it or donate them. I know a lot of different places will be so appreciative to have the supplies, but it just kind of declutters your craft room. I know a lot of people will say that they have a way too much stuff and it makes them, you know, not want to even create because they don't know where to start. And that can be a really good way to just kind of declutter your craft room a little bit. I had a whole extra shelf in my craft room that was just collecting garbage. And I got rid of a lot of the different supplies that were sitting on top of it and the whole unit together. And it really opened up my last space so much and got me way more inspired to create. So even just getting rid of things that you're not using is one of the best tips I can give you. And again, do a system where it's kind of like, hey, remind me of it. And then if you're still not using it, then I might want to get rid of it after that because it's not bringing you joy. Before we end today's video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and people like us who just want to learn something new. It has some really awesome topics like music, art, crafts, and lots of other design classes as well. So they cover a lot of different things for everybody. I design all of my own stamps for my product line, Simon Hurley Create, and I've been using different drawing and animation classes on Skillshare to really, really help me learn and grow in my design so I can really bring you guys the best products. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual membership, and Skillshare has offered the first 1,000 of you guys who click the link down below in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, which is so awesome. So check that out down below if you're interested. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed my five craft room tips. Be sure to leave your tips down below if you've created a craft room or space and you want to share some of the tips with me and other people, especially as we create my new space. I would love to hear what you guys think. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys for another video very, very soon. Have a great day. Bye.